Well, today on Nation, the small business podcast, we're talking all about the five lessons I learned from cleaning windows, all the way from what makes a business successful, all the way to what I know now about confidence. So if you're in business at all, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. This show's been going on for six stinking years. Go back and watch and listen. It's anywhere podcasts are found, and of course, also on YouTube. If you want to comment, throw stuff out there, definitely do that. Uh, If it's not your first time here, what's up? Thank you for coming back. Hopefully, uh, you enjoy it, and hopefully, you've enjoyed all these episodes. If you are watching and you're on YouTube, go ahead and just type the number of how many episodes you have watched or listened to. And if it's all, just type all. But uh, it'll confuse everybody and uh, I always like to keep track for that. Uh, If you didn't know, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. We are the greatest place to buy your window cleaning supplies and I am the greatest rep you could possibly have in your corner. And I wanna be your rep. So shameless plug of the day, let me put your orders in, ask questions, let me be your rep. If I put your orders in, it costs you nothing extra and I get credit for it. It's like a virtual high five, by the way. Uh, If you've put your orders in through me, I got a limited edition cool kid sticker because you're now officially a cool kid. My number is 862-312-2026. That's a cell, go ahead and call me or text me. Let me know everything's in your cart and If you didn't know and you're living under a rock, check out the American Window Cleaner magazine. The magazine's been around since 1986, uh, probably longer than some of you window cleaners out there. Uh, But go get the magazine, go to awcmag.com. Get the subscription, please. It would be absolutely amazing. I want everybody to be as big of a nerd in the industry about industry stuff as me. And listen, the more you learn, the more you soak up, the more you take in content-wise, the better the window cleaner you are and the other guy's not doing it. So remember that. All right. Well, today, that is what we're talking about. And it is the five lessons I learned from cleaning windows. And I know there's probably a lot of uh, other lessons out there. And I had to pick five because five into five minutes is 25. And uh, it's a 30 minute podcast with the intro and all the other stuff. And then, you know, so that's why we did that there. There's got to be a lot of lessons. Uh, some harder than others, that's for dang sure. I mean, I've learned about uh, saving for taxes. If you didn't learn that yet, uh, that's such a hard lesson. Um, planning for slow times, um, you know, advertising only when you're busy. I mean, there's a lot of things there we've talked about over the past six years. But I got the five lessons that I've learned. These five are the ones that have kind of come up um, the most often. And I think that they're also the ones that people argue me the most, I think. By the way, without being clickbaity, but the last one uh, is actually uh, the one that I absolutely get beat up on the most. And if you wanna beat me up, that's totally cool. Send me an email, uh, text me, whatever. Uh, All content's good. I I do wanna know your guys's thoughts. I'm just a dude with a mic and sits in front of a a screen. So, um, but I've been window cleaning for 16 years, had my company. um, Great. We ran crews. I was out of the field. Um, You know, I got off the truck, if you will. So uh, I've learned a lot of different lessons than some of you who have just been cleaning that entire time. Yes, I was into pure water, very heavy. We did pressure washing. Uh, We ran multiple crews, different types of divisions, if you were. I've done all of the services I possibly can. And I have been in window cleaning as far as media and content and sales and product specialists and videos. I have done probably more, not even probably, I've done more content than any other person in window cleaning. I've been in the industry and uh, out and about, so um, I still don't know a thing or two, but maybe you'll get a thing or two from it. So either way, here are the five lessons that I learned. And number five is one that takes some time, but it's you are the pro. Now, let 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 me explain this one. When people get into window cleaning, they have this, um, phobia of uh, basically thinking they're a fraud, right? The the minute you are, say somebody, 
I'm a window cleaner. The minute somebody pays you to clean their windows, you are a professional window cleaner. Now wait. Before you go, oh man, it's people like you who are ruining the industry because there's a bunch of new people. Yeah, but there's not more window cleaners than there ever has been. People retire, more people come on, right? And I am not saying that that guy or gal who has a company for all of six minutes is anywhere close to as qualified as somebody who's been in the business six years. No, it's not at all what I'm saying. But the technical definition is if you get paid for a service, you are a professional in that service, right? So if you get paid for window cleaning, you are the professional. What that means is that people hire you because you know what you're doing. Now, if this is your first job, obviously you've probably done some research. So right out of the gate, you know more than people who just clean their own windows every now and then, more than likely. As time goes on, you get more confident because you know a lot of things. You're listening to or watching a window cleaning podcast, right? The big thing in that is that if you have any or all of that kind of knowledge, if you will, before it becomes common knowledge, you end up feeling like a phony. But here's the thing, people hire you to be the pro. So you have to be confident. Don't ever go to somebody and say, you know, and they go, oh, uh, you know, what do you, what do you charge for those windows? And go, ah, I don't know, like 15 bucks? That, you're asking a question. You're confident. People go, well, how do you take screens off if you're doing just outs? I tell them, oh, well, uh, what happens? I go somewhere and I, I water feed, but um, I don't think they're, they don't want me to water feed. What? That's because you asked or you were unsure. When I walk into a job, I am absolutely 100% sure that what I'm doing is the way I'm gonna do it. And I know my pricing is exactly what it is, even if I'm wrong. But if I walk in and I have a water fed, I'm not gonna go, um, can I use this What? Because now they're like, well, you don't even trust what you know, right? You're the pro. And that means you have to be the pro and the deciding factor. You have to be confident what you're doing. If not, people dictate what you do instead of you dictating what people do. Say on the screen thing, which I get probably twice a week, every week for the, as long as I've been talking to people. People go, well, if you're water feeding, what do you do about the screens? When I call, I go, okay, Mrs. Jones, we'll be there on Tuesday. It'll be between 8 and 9 a.m. Go ahead and take all your screens down the day before. That way we can get started. And uh, when we do show up, I'll make sure to say hi and let you know we're there and explain the process for you. Uh, but having those screens down just makes it a little bit easier for us to get started. Uh, if you do want to have them cleaned, remember our screen prices start. Uh, they are $5 a screen. We can use our screen washing machine and uh, get those cleaned while they're down for you. That's it. 16 years, I guess. We'll say 15 of those 16 years. That's how I've said it. And every single time, because you're the professional explaining how we do this, they go, yeah, okay, great. If you do a service, any service, say you're a mechanic and you say, hey, we need this car to be hot when you come in. So just drive it for about 15 minutes before you bring it in. That way, then we can put it right on the diagnostic. People go, okay. If you're a carpet cleaner and say, well, if you have any type of furniture, all the small furniture you can move, make sure to move it yourself, or we don't move furniture or whatever. People go, okay. If you do house washing, you say, move everything away, any plants or hanging baskets that you don't want us to spray our soaps on, make sure to take those down and move them out of the way for us. Okay. You are the pro. Be the pro, even if in your head you're not quite positive that you're the pro. And I'm telling you, this whole thing is going to be a lot simpler when you realize that everybody who's coming to you, with the exception of one or two, come to you because they instantly think, well, this is the guy who owns the company. He knows more about window cleaning. I'll ask the question on this. I'll ask the question on that. I'll ask the, even if they say, hey, I got all these spots on this window. You know, can you take that off? And it's hard water. And you don't know if you can take it off. I said, well, I do uh, know that that's hard water. We do treat for hard water. It ends up being $25 a pain. Um, and I will go ahead and uh, apply all of our uh, um, chemicals for that. And uh, we'll see uh, what we can get off, right? Pressure washing. If you're out there doing flat surface cleaning, 
they're going to be, oh, man, can you get this oil out? No, I'm not going to be able to get it 100%. You're not going to have brand new concrete, but I am going to lighten it up. And hopefully, hopefully, I'll make sure that it is gone to the naked eye. But uh, we can only have so many capabilities, being that your concrete is a little on the older side, right? Putting that out there, did you answer the question? I didn't definitely say yes and then put myself in a pickle. I didn't waver. I gave them the answer. Great. Okay, cool. Hey, what soaps do you use? You don't go, what? Well, I, actually, I just use Dawn. That's, that's not it. That's not how you act. Well, we use Dawn. Surprisingly, it is one of the best soap solutions we use in window cleaning. The silicones are great. The slide is good. The, the, the cleaning is good. And it's got some degreasing to it. Oh, wow. How do you guys get it so clean? Is it the, It's not the soap. It's actually the technique. But I have to say, I'm cheating. I do this eight hours a day, every day. And I've done it for the past X amount of years. So in theory, you know, we're always going to be a little bit better and faster than a uh, homeowner trying to do it, um, which is understandable. Confidence shows you're the pro, right? Be the pro. The next one in the five lessons that I've learned is that sales is how people book, but experience is why people return. I'll, I'll, I'll say that again. Sales is how you get people to try you, to use you, to start with you. Experience is what gets those people to do another cleaning, to come back to you. Now, I know there's a lot of you out there who say, um, and I get this all the time, which if this is your thought, again, I'm wrong, I'm just some guy, but if you think that people use you because you do, you clean good windows, or you clean windows well, or you, um, do such a good job on windows, you're absolutely wrong. Because before proven wrong, every window cleaner cleans the windows the same. Clean is clean. If it's not clean, it's dirty. There's only on or off. You know, when somebody's like, oh, it's not as clean as I'd like, then it's dirty because it's not clean, right? So no, it is not because of how you clean windows. It's the experience you provide. Right? So sales, I can sell somebody. Somebody calls up, somebody finds us. I can do my SEO. I can be seen. I can do all that stuff. Somebody calls and I can give them exactly what they need to know and book them right over the phone. Boom, done. My sales is amazing. I'm on point. Awesome. Yeah, let's do it. The sales is done. Now it's for the experience. The sales side of, hey, give us a shot. I want to prove ourselves to you. That's the sale. But to come back, it's the experience. They get in. You show up super professional. You're, you're dressed nice. You look good. right? Your, everything is branded. Your trucks look great. Staff is incredibly friendly. Take your shoes off. You're, you're personable. right? All your documentation is professional. Everything that they have from start to finish in the process is absolutely calculated to be in a great experience. You make them feel great. Yeah, you, you do good windows. You can't do crap work. You do all of that and they get done and they're like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is so easy. The booking was fast. The, you guys are so great. Look at all of the reviews people send in to companies. Look at these companies that are the highest rated companies. What is the number one thing by far, if not in almost every single uh, review done in a company. That tells you what people remember. Oh, this was so great. So easy, so fast. The texts were so nice. Oh, they were so polite. They took the shoot. All of those things they're explaining is what people remember. No one is out there going, well, they clean windows way better than other people who clean windows. Because clean is clean. They may say, oh, they did a great job. They touch on that because a great job means you didn't do a bad job. Everything else is the experience. The experience is why somebody comes back. The experience is why people return. So you have to focus more on the experience than um, you know, getting this uh, initial thing, this, this first piece. The experience is something that a lot of you 
may not be focused on. And the third thing that t- ties off of that, and this took a long time, also one of the, the biggest things people, they understand it, but they don't want to understand it, I think. I think. And it's nothing is about cleaning windows. Your window cleaning company is not about cleaning windows. It's not. You're like, well, yeah, you're an idiot. Um, you know, uh, yes, it's a window cleaning company. It's of course it's a, no. Listen, hear me out. We talked about experience. The experience of this luxury service. You happen to do window cleaning. So is it about making the windows clean? Yes. But the act of cleaning the windows? No. If you have the state-of-the-art equipment, awesome. I am the biggest fan of Waterfed you will ever see anywhere. I love it. It's amazing. I think everybody should get into Waterfed. Um, By the way, 862-312-2026. If you're getting into Waterfed, I have questions to ask. But anyway, side note. I don't think that you need to tell the people, oh, the system, hey, uh, excuse me, do you have a second to come look at my stuff? No, I don't want to look at that. No one's interested. They're happy that you have that equipment. You're happy you have that equipment. Your techs are happy. Your speed is happy. Your money is happy. But people don't care about the act of cleaning windows. I, I always thought it was the more focused and detailed and, oh, man, look at the, uh, uh, and all of a sudden, 20 minutes per window goes by and you're like, yeah, that's why they like me. No one cares. If I have a magic wand and I can go bink, bink, bink and just make everybody's windows clean, that's what they paid for. They paid to have their windows clean. The luxury service of it is everything that would go on top of that. If I had a magic wand, well, I would, of course, have to show people the magic wand because it's just so unbelievable. In cleaning windows, people don't care. They don't want you to be there for 20 minutes. Yes, sometimes people go, well, you made this much money, you made a lot of money per hour. I always joke, yeah, we're hiring. (laughs) But no, truly, if you see a spot, streak, or smear, anything that I left in any light, remember, there's a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Let me know, and I will come back, and I will make that window look beautiful for you. Confidence. Yeah, it was fast, but it is awesome. Yes, it was fast, but listen, if you think I went too fast and I'm cutting corners, I have a guarantee that I didn't cut corners, right? It's not about cleaning the window. Window cleaning just happens to be what we do. Could you have a great business mowing lawns? Could you have a great business doing carpet cleaning? Could you have a great business detailing yachts? Yes, because every company that's out there in every side and every industry, there is something like that. Somebody who say mows lawn, or we'll say we'll go into luxury side of things and and say you have a a, a deep mobile detailing business, right? For a mobile detailer to come out to you, that's not a necessity. It's not a need. You could go to a car wash, do it yourself, lots of things. To have somebody come out to you and do that process, they have to create something on top. If they do the job, 10 people line up and they all do the exact same job and they all have the exact same experience, then it comes back to money. But if one person's experience is so much elevated, everybody's gonna clean the car. Everybody's gonna clean the windows right? It's not about cleaning windows. Window cleaning window cleaning just happens to be what you do. And that's a hard one because when you start, you're so focused on being really good at cleaning windows and windows are hard and, and I'm a window cleaner, so I got to calm down. Remember, you have a business first and your business cleans windows. It's a hard one. It's really a hard one. Um, another one that I know, and you know, but yet you don't put to the forefront, is be seen. You, as your company, has to be seen. If you have as many customers as you ever want, they're great, they're awesome, that's perfectly fine. 
That, that is absolutely amazing in your company. You've hit it, you've done it, you've got to that pinnacle. You don't need a website, you don't need um, uh, you know, logos and letters on your vehicles or wraps or anything else. But if you are looking to ever have more customers, if you're ever looking to get more people in, if you're ever looking to add crews and build this uh, overall kind of company, if you're looking to be bigger than you are or stronger than you are, you have to be seen. I know people think, well, I don't know, what, what should I do? How can I get customers? How are people seeing you right now? Well, I, uh, I wear my shirt around town. No one's seeing that. What's your website look like? What's your SEO look like? SEO, the number one thing you could possibly do for a business. Number one thing. Right? What do your vehicles look like? When you're driving, when you're parked, when you're in your shop, when you're doing whatever. Where are people seeing you? If it's not everywhere, then they not seeing you they're seeing other window cleaners if seeing you your logo everything is clear and understandable it will trigger them to think about your service it will help them to see you if you don't get seen and you're not everywhere you think people you think that you are bigger or more visible than other people do Go into incognito vote, uh, mode on the uh, internet and Google and just type in window cleaning and type in your state. You're not going to pull up more than likely unless you're doing some SEO and stuff, right? That's a big search. Okay. Uh, window cleaning and your county. Did you pull up? Window cleaning in your city. Did you pull up? How are people finding you or how are people looking? If they're searching you out, not finding you, that's SEO. Go get SEO. But if you're not in front of people triggering them to want to see you, you're missing the boat. You have to be seen. I always thought that, man, if I, if I had a great website, people would find it. They would, no, they'd find. A website doesn't just rank. A great website doesn't just rank. It's, it's all SEO. If I want people to see my literature, my flyers, my name, my logo, if I want people to go, whoa, look at this window, I have to be in front of them. Flyers, door hangers, I'm doing EDDM, right? I'm getting out to be seen. The more you're seen, the more people call you, the more your sales work, and the more jobs you get. The growth happens. I always thought I was doing a good job. Because that's all you see all day, every day. You look at your logo and your website and your stuff and you're like, I don't know what's going on. People aren't calling. It must be an economy thing. No, people aren't finding you. Let me ask you this. And if you, you say, well, people kind of know me. I, I'm, a, I'm a household name here in my town. First off, no, you're not. Maybe you are with people who maybe used you before, maybe recognize your name. But no. Most of the town isn't even your customer and they don't know who you are. Let's take McDonald's, for instance. You know I love talking about McDonald's. Every person above two years old knows what a McDonald's is. But yet, McDonald's advertises on every media they possibly can. They're on coupon cards and they're on radio and they're on TV and magazines and newspapers. They are everywhere. Why? Because they need to remind people that they're there. They're not explaining, hey, ever heard of McDonald's? Well, let me tell you. No. All they're doing is staying in front of it. They're being seen. Why do you think that most of the billboards on the interstate before an exit end up being a food place? Because you go, whoa, food, here, pull off. Front, right? They have to be seen. You have to be seen. If McDonald's advertises everywhere and they're McDonald's, I think there's something to that, right? I think that you could be doing more to be seen. Don't let that kind of fall to the wayside. Don't think you're doing enough because you're never doing enough. And the biggest one, and uh, what I did say, clickbait in the beginning, I'm sorry. But the biggest, biggest, biggest thing that I learned, unfortunately a lot later than I should have, is repeat 
is the key to growth. Repeat work is the key to growth. Now, if you look at any company out there, including your own, more than likely for the 99.8% of you, what's your big thing? I oh, need customers, man. We're slow. Let's get some customers. Let's advertise against customers. It costs you 10 times more to get somebody new in than somebody that's repeat. But yet you focus 99% of your time on new customers. Why is that? Because in your brain, you think that every time you take, pick up a Lego and you put it in your bucket, that Lego stays in the bucket. You pick up another one, put it in, oh man, look at all that. I got a thousand Legos. What if only five of those Legos actually get used, right? What if in the bucket of customers, five of those customers are using you, but you have a thousand in there? What, what matters, the thousand that you have that aren't buying or the five that are? right? Do this as, as just kind of something where I know I bring up some of this stuff and people go, well, this is kind of common sense, but, but look at this. How many customers do you have right now? You're listening to this, watching it just in your head. How many customers? 100, 500,000, 50, 20? How many customers do you have? That was this year. That's great. How many of those customers that you have are on the books? Guarantee not all of them. I guarantee not most of them if you've been in this for a while. And why? It's because in your brain, you're always looking to a business succeed if they can find customers, if they get customers, if they, the existing customer, going to the dentist clothes. You know the dentist clothes. I won't go into that. I've done a thousand videos on that. Basically, it's every time you're done with service, you book them just like the dentist does for the next service. Now, every, maybe not even every, we'll say 90%, but we'll say 75% of your customers do that close, which by the way, if you're good at sales and you're confident, you'll have way more than that. But say 75% of them are there. That means 75% of all your customers are, are they're, they're on the calendar right now. They're already booked for their next service. That's growth. If you had 100 customers, Great. If none of them are on the schedule, you have zero jobs. You have zero income. You have some possibility to contact them. But what would you rather have? 100 customers you've done work for, none on the books, or 100 customers that get it done every six months, every 100? Because guess what? You sell another 100, now you have 200 on the books every six months. That means 400 customers but we're 100 jobs a year by just having that done every two. You just keep adding new customers. Customers are important to keep it in, but people neglect the existing. The existing is what gets you growth. The monster companies have plans in place for existing customers to keep them happy, to keep them coming back, to get frequency, and to keep money coming in. If I have 100 customers on the books for this September, I already know what I'm doing in September. I know what staff I need. I know what trucks I need. I know whatever. If I got nobody, I go, oh man, I sure hope this year, I think this year is going to be good. I, I, I do. In normal sales like that, on the first day of the month, you start at zero. If you have $100 booked this month or next month, or a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm booked next month. Okay, what's your December look like? What's your November look like right now? Well, we get pretty bit. No, 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 no. That's you hoping everything goes to plan. But what do you have on there right now? If you're not focused on existing customers, it's uh, not a whole heck of a lot, right? So anyway, there you go. That's the five lessons I learned while cleaning windows. And I'm glad you hung out. And I hope it didn't suck. And I hope you got something out of it. If you did... And at all, you want to be like, yo, Jersey, he's a good dude. I'm going to send him my order. All you have to do in the checkout screen when you're logged in is just click the little thing above like the button where you push to pay. It says, save this cart. It takes like a picture of your cart. 
and I can see it. You text me and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. I push go instead of you and you've just helped me live. You've just fed my children. <laughs> I know, but really that's what I do for money. So I really, really appreciate that. That's what I do. But also I want to be your rep. I want to put the orders in. That's obviously how I make money and it costs you nothing extra. Literally the same price if you do it or if I do it. But not only do I get credit for it, but now you have a guy where you're like, hey, uh, Jersey, I got this thing come up. And I got some questions. Ask. That's what I do every day, all day, and I love doing it. I want to be your rep and I want to help you be awesome. So do that. 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. I'm the only Jersey you know, so put me in there. Also, awcmag.com. Go there, get the magazine. Uh, it's a subscription paper magazine with sticker sheet every single month to your door. Yeah, real paper magazine, something you can really read on the toilet. Yeah. Uh, go and do that. Uh, get the subscription. And um, yeah, until next time. Go out there and hopefully learn from my lessons, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.